When 17-year-old Danny Mackay was on the run in a stolen car, he stumbled on a book that would radically change his life. Today, he brings that radical message to young people across the country as the National Youth Ministry Ambassador for World Vision Canada. Danny, welcome to Full Circle. Thank you for having me. Oh, Good wow. to have oh, you. Oh, I just sort of appear on the couch. Yes, all of a sudden, <laughs> there he sudden. is. Okay. We dropped you in from I actually the ceiling, was here the right? whole time. I don't know if you guys noticed. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We just, yeah, yeah we didn't see okay, no, you. You know what? As a slowly. mom, the first place I want to start is I need to know what were you doing in a stolen car, young man? Oh. Like, really? Come on wow. out. Well, you know what? <laughs> it, actually, it actually goes back uh, much further than that. Um, my first arrest was at five years old. <laughs> and uh, that was the kind of kid I was. And I think in the words of Bill Cosby, my mom and dad were thinking, you know, we brought you into this world. We can take you out <laughs> okay. and make another one look just like you. Okay. you know? but, what uh, was the offense? Yeah, yeah, five years old. You I, uh, some friends of mine and I went across the street to where they were building some new houses. And we decided to break all the windows <gasps> in these new oh, houses. Oh, Danny. I know. That's I so know. much fun. I know. Yes, it is. Cool. Yeah, there is something to be said about the breaking of glass. It's, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a fun, yeah. Your testosterone, as much as you had at five. Thing, yeah. And you got arrested. I did, yes, we got caught. Um, somebody called the police, they came, they took us home. And you know, I think for me, there was a switch that went on then at that point in my life. And I, I, I began to realize that, you know, I'm cool when I'm bad. <laughs> and that's what I felt, you know, I needed to do to get attention, to affirm myself, to be cool, to fit in, was, uh, was to misbehave. And that carried right into junior high, grade 7, grade 8. And so my parents uh, moved us out to uh, a small town of Stonewall when I was about 14. This was huge for me because... Is this to get you away from the city? No, I, my mom got a new job. Uh, oh. She became a, a guard at uh, Stony Mountain penitentiary, the maximum that security yeah. prison. Yeah. 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 I think she was going there for some tips <laughs> yeah. Yeah, on how to deal with people <laughs> like myself. And, uh, you know, so it was going into a new town, uh, a whole new school, uh, new everything. And, and it, was, it was kind of a scary place uh, for me to be. So I did what every kid did. They do what everybody around them is doing and they, they want to fit in. And so I, uh, that's when I, it was about 14, 15 years old, right? I got pulled into drugs and mm -hmm. drinking and just started to, to live that, that kind of life, you know? And at first it felt like, well, this is normal and everybody's doing it. What's the, what's the big deal? But within, uh, by the time I was about 16, 16 and a half, it really took over. And um, it, it became, uh, you know, a lot of confusion came into my life. I didn't know who I could trust. Uh, I felt very alone, I felt very scared, uh, and, and I had n nowhere to turn. I was really scared and, and didn't feel like I had anybody. I think that's so interesting because probably on the outside, you were like this cool kid mm -hmm. who had it all together, exactly. was in with the, mm -hmm. the crowd, yeah. right, and confident, and nobody knew what was really going on underneath the surface of your life. And exactly. Could you share it with anybody? Was there anybody you could tell? Well, at that point, I, you know, I felt like such a disappointment to my parents, and so, you know, I, 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 I didn't feel like, you know, you know, I, I could turn to them. I'm sure they, they were great. They, they would have loved to have, to have heard that, but that's what I felt. It's not that they made me feel that. It's just that's what I felt. I felt like such a disappointment. And uh, I didn't feel like I could trust my friends. I felt like a, such a huge disappointment to my teachers as well. Um, you know, I'd never really got involved in a youth group or anything like that, so I didn't have, you know, a youth leader or a youth pastor or anything like that. And what so, about siblings? Yeah. Any, any uh, well, my sister, she was about four years older than I was, and, and we just, we weren't that close at that age. We, we are now, we're really close now, but we weren't then, and so it was a very scary place to be. And I remember having a thought, um, uh, a friend of mine and, and I got into a really late night discussion about God, and it sort of woke up this, this little light inside of me that maybe I could turn to God. And I really didn't know what that meant or what that looked like or how. And so I decided to talk to a religious leader in our, in our town. And uh, that didn't really go so well. I, f I found, uh, you know, a bunch of religious answers, almost like I had to do a bunch of things uh, in order to get right with God. And, and so that little light mm. of hope that I had of turning to God went out. So in that place then, you, why the stolen car? Were you trying to escape from somebody? Was it a joy ride? Were you trying to impress your friends? It was uh, two days after I had talked to, to uh, after I'd had that conversation I just talked about, it was two days after uh, a friend of mine kind of suggested it at about uh, midnight one night, like we should just run away. We should run away. Mm -hmm. And 
it just felt like the right thing to do. You felt tried like everything the, else you knew yeah. to do. Yeah. I knew. And it was a wonderful, well thought out plan <laughs> uh, with much detail. <laughs> It was, uh, it was get a car, uh, get to BC, get a job on a boat, and go see the world. That was, good, that was kind plan, of our yeah. plan, yeah. yeah. And we got a boat uh, an hour and a half outside of Winnipeg, uh, which is not quite BC, but um, and we got chased by an RCMP officer there, and it really uh, was a, a crazy 24 hours, uh, 30 hours of, of just uh, you know, random escapes, uh, driving through fields and getting away and, and being on the run. And um, that kind of scared us. And so we decided to turn back. And, I, and on the way back home... He didn't catch you. No, he, he didn't catch you. No, he didn't. You eluded him. <laughs> no. If you ever get a chance to drive a car in a cornfield, I highly recommend it. <laughs> We'll that your right cornfield, yeah. your, your car. car. Yeah. yeah, I was going to yes. say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So but, you elude them, and then? Yeah, and that, you know, I think was a God thing, because it was, it was in, in, in that time, on the way back, that I, I reached into the backpack that uh, my friend had brought, and in that backpack was a book that was given to him by um, a lady, you know, that went to a church in our town and, and really wanted to get a lot of us young guys uh, saved. Uh, you know, and become believers. So she had given this book and it made its way around and it finally got to my friend Clint. And so when he grabbed a bunch of things from his room and threw them into the backpack, he uh, mm. wound up grabbing this book. Mm. And so I reached in and I, I got a hold of it and I looked at it and it was, it was called Stairway to Hell by Rick Jones and it was Hope for Today's Teen. And it was an outreach book to teenagers that were really just in the trenches and going through uh, a lot of the things that I was going through, just really lost. And uh, this really resonated. And I remember that little light of hope that I had about connecting with God came back on again. And um, we went home and, and uh, we got rid of the car. And I took the book home and I read half of it in one night. And I read the second half the second night. And for the first time in my life, I'm hearing the gospel. I'm hearing good news that... Mm -hmm. God isn't done with me, that even though my life is full of, of a mess and I've made all the wrong decisions at every turn possible, and, and though I felt just in the deepest, darkest pit uh, possible, He still loves me. And uh, that just really resonated with me, because that's what I needed to, mm -hmm. I needed to know that, you know, that I was lovable. Mm 